see him? Sure, we saw him. Oh, I knew you could do it. Well, give it to me. Give it to you. The story, the pictures. We didn't get any. You didn't? You heard it. Now, before we get all mixed up, let's start from the first. Tell me what happened. He slammed the door right in my kisser. And where was your foot? Right where you told me to put it, chum. And it's going to cost you 15 hunks of lettuce. Yeah. Put down 498 on the swindle sheet. He's been reading the ads. This is the second time that a leased wire service has queried us on that invention. And they're demanding a story and picture. And after we do run it down, what do you got? Probably some kind of a Rube Goldberg that turns butter into cows, cows into grass, and grass into hula skirts. They've got a tip at some kind of a new listening device, like the one that was used on Capitol Hill. A contraption where you can hear people talking miles away and without planting a microphone. With a thing like that, everybody would be living in a goldfish bowl. Why, a girl couldn't even sing in the bathtub. Combine that with television, you got something, sister. Give your mind a little more altitude, bud. It doesn't make any difference to us what the invention is. All we've got to do is get the story. Foster's head of the Emerson Foundation. Now, I want you two to get out to his home and make him talk. Look, Foster isn't the inventor. Professor Reynolds is. Let's try him at the laboratory. Why didn't you think of that a week ago? Why didn't you? Yeah. Do we have to do all the thinking around this journey? If you did, the place would fold up. Now, get out there and see what you can get out of Reynolds. But he's only there at night. Whenever it is, be there. Okay, boss. My sweetheart. What's the idea? What are you doing? Just getting your picture in the box. Don't mind him. His brains didn't quite gel. Hey, what do you two want anyway? Uh, we just thought we'd drop in and have a little chat with Professor Reynolds. She's an old friend of the family. The professor used to bounce her on his knee. Yeah, and him on his head. If you haven't got a pass signed by John Foster, the both of you can bounce yourselves right out of here. Sonny boy, do you realize that you're talking to two representatives press? See? And if you're a good little boy and let us in and see Professor Reynolds, we'll get your name in the paper. And I'll put your picture in the paper. Why don't the two of you beat it? Oh, a nasty character. Mm -hmm. Hello? Oh, hello, Mike. Oh, no, Mike, no. You know I never talk to reporters about my work. Yeah, I know, Professor. Most likely they'll be standing on the outside waiting to buttonhole you. Uh, probably the two have been pestering John Foster. <laughs> Thanks for turning me off, Mike. Oh, Mike. Mike, the lights have just gone off in here. Maybe a fuse. Will you check them, please? A lot of work to do, Mike. Uh, hello. What's wrong, Professor? Mike, help! I'll call the police. Boner, I might have talked my way right past that night watchman. Oh, I was only kidding. Kidding, kidding. One of these days you're going to kid us right into jail. Can't you keep your big mouth shut? Shooting in Emerson Laboratory. Shooting at first in Maple Street, Emerson Laboratory. Shooting at first in Maple Street, Emerson Laboratory. to do run over us.
What's going on here? Say, something must be happening. Hey, let's follow him, huh? Hiya, Barney. What's going on around here? Oh, somebody got conked. Guy named Reynolds. Oh, the professor. How'd it happen? Who did it? All I know is he got hit by some guy. They're searching the building for him now. Thanks a million, Barney. Come on, Eddie. Let's go. Okay. Well, I'll give him back to him. Hey, mister, you dropped something. Yeah. Just a minute. Don't put this in your coat. Oh, Eddie, did you see a man go by here? Sure. Went right down those stairs. They must be valuable. You wouldn't risk his life to steal them. Come on, let's get going. Just a bruise, Professor. You're lucky. Oh, I feel all right now. Got a pretty tough head. <laughs> May I see Professor Reynolds, please? You got a pass? Oh, no. Do I need one? Nobody gets through that door without a pass from John Foster. Oh, well, I just want to see Professor Reynolds for a second. Oh, wait a minute. Get going, will you, sister? Hello, Patsy. Hiya, Casey. Send this bird won't let me by without a pass. Tell him who I am. Who you are? Makes no difference to me if you were the Queen of Sheba. Yeah, and she'd need a pass, too. Mm. Wait a minute, Patsy. I'll ask the professor if he'll see you. Thanks a million, Casey. Won't do you no good. Yeah, well, just watch, Bob. Well, if it isn't Miss Scoop herself. Hiya, Patsy. What's the matter? Can't you get in? Listen, Creek, just because you're old Foster's nephew, you got a pull. A pull? Well, I can't get in there myself. You don't have to dig up stuff for that rag you work on. Stick around, I'll come out here and blab it to you. Listen, Patsy, you got me all wrong. Why can't we bury the hatchet? Yeah, right in my skull, down to my ankles. <laughs> What's up, Mike? Reynolds got slugged. He did? Yeah. Was he hurt bad? Ah, uh, just a goose egg. He'll be all right. Sorry, Patsy. The professor says no interviews. Well, thanks, Casey. Did he get away? He did. After shooting at Mike here. Well, either of you fellas have any idea who it was? No, it was too dark to get a good look. He stole some important drawings. Step right in, Mr. Biggs. I'll tell you all about it. They may even write it for you. Now, Patsy, all I'll know is what you just heard them tell me. You ain't heard nothing yet. Well, you read my story. That dame. Still got those things? Right. Those drawings are worth their weight in gold. In what? Well, on printer's ink anyway. <laughs> but suppose the cops find out we got them. Not we, me. And you keep your big trap shut. I'll return them to the owners when and if. 
first I want to have a scientist friend of mine take a peek at him. Well, you mean that radio and electronics engineer, Joe Sewell? Yeah, that's the guy. Huh? I've always said you were smart. Wish I could say the same for you. <laughs> to knock his block off. Let's have those drawings. Look straight ahead. Look straight ahead. Take that back about you not being smart. Oh, that chump never had a chance with me. If you only waited, I'd have beat him to a pulp. Uh -huh, I know. Tell me, uh, that uh, flash bulb didn't happen to go off accidentally, did it? Are you kidding? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Joe, what sort of a contraption is this? Well, it's a little too complicated to explain to a layman. You'd have to know something about electronics. Electronics, huh? Do you know what it's all about? Not all, a little. It's a machine that uh, will pick up sound. I mean, uh, voices at a distance. Same principle is used in boats. Then if it works, it's really worth getting excited about, huh? It is it. I'd say it will revolutionize the science of communications, do away with wires, cables, broadcasting stations. You mean you can tune in on anybody, any place? Well, that is the theory. Wow! Eddie, pull that up. Thanks a million, Joe. And you and I are going over to John Foster's. For once in our life, we've got an ace in the hole. As you know, the last thing we wanted was to attract public attention to this invention. After what happened tonight, the newspapers will be full of it. As members of the Foundation's Advisory Committee, all of us are sworn to secrecy. If we don't tell the press anything, they can't publish very much. You're right. What we've got to do is get those drawings back. But we haven't a clue. It must be someone who's trying to beat us to the patent. I tell you, there's millions in it. Start these with your life, and when I whistle, you come in. Okay. Now, why haven't we applied for the patent? Well, Reynolds asked me to hold off till he get a few things straightened out. It's a cinch. The thief is trying to beat us to the patent. Well, only today, Duckworth booted a news hawk down my front steps and shut the door on another one. A most persistent young woman. Yeah, and I'm still persisting. Who let you in? The door was unlocked, so I just walked in. Well, you better leave right now. Sweetheart, you're going to beg me to accept the keys to the city. Get out before I call the police. Watch your blood pressure, sonny boy, or you'll keel over from the excitement before I give you the good news. What is all this foolishness? Well, boys, what am I offered for one complete set of uh, drawings of your invention? Would you care to start the bidding, Mr. Foster? You mean you have them? Hmm. I wouldn't exactly say that. I just simply asked a simple question. Care to make an offer? You mean you're trying to bargain with me? Why, that's... Blackmail? Uh-uh. I don't engage in that. What is this all about? You either have them or you haven't. Well, it's just that I'm fairly sure I can lay my hands on them. I was pushed around plenty by you guys when you were in the driver's seat. Now I'm doing the driving. Let's see the drawing. My line is newspaper work. I deal in exclusive stories. All I want is a beat on this invention. We couldn't possibly reveal the details, not at this time. All I want is just a general idea of the thing and a picture. And a nice group shot of you, pretty gentlemen. You know, the sponsors of this uh, scientific miracle. That's not asking too much. Oh, I thought you'd see it my way. When you can produce the drawings, we'll give you the story. That's got it. I'll take a chance on it. Trying to whistle? Yeah. Do it this way. You can whistle either. 
thank you, Duckworth. Well, I'm surprised myself, sir. Duckworth can whistle. Ah, Patsy, that was a beaut. <laughs> Looks like a wig. Let's have him. Okay, here you are. How do we know you didn't take him? Listen, Curly Locks, are you trying to renege? I picked him up when the thief dropped him. Yeah, we almost got killed afterwards when he held us up. Who was it? What did he look like? We couldn't see. It was too dark. It could have been anybody. As a matter of fact, Mr. Foster, knowing how valuable they are, it could have been you. That's ridiculous. Uh, coming right down to cases, any of us might have a motive. The only thing we can do is to keep our end of the bargain. Yeah, that's right. That sounds reasonable. I got ten minutes to make the deadline. Hello, Jimmy. Good evening, Mr. Blank. Hello, everybody. Hi, Hi Jimmy. Hi, Junior. Well, if it isn't the bad penny, tuppence to you. Okay, two bad pennies. What are you two doing here? As usual, getting a beat on your outfit. What's the idea, Uncle John? Miss Clark returned the stolen drawings. And made a deal for an exclusive on the invention. So, if you don't mind, you can run along now, little boy. How about that, Uncle? I'm afraid she's right, Jimmy. I heard the drawings were stolen. Just how did you get hold of them? Mm, perfect timing. Just being there in the right place and in the right time. Scram. Okay. You know, someday this phenomenal luck of yours is going to run out. Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Good night. Um, uh, Jimmy. As you were about to say, Mr. Parker. Now, young woman, I'll tell you as much as I can. Here you are, boss. Hey, Red. Uh, yeah. Has Patsy called in yet? Nope. Well, we can't wait any longer. Grab an early edition of the Daily News and knock out something. Heck of a note when you have to steal news from a rag like that. When she does call in, tell her the cashier's got a surprise for her. Her closing check. He'd give you the horse laugh, Chief. Yeah, and this time it sticks. Rewrite, Des. Now, hold on, Patsy. Hey, boss, it's her. Well, you heard what I said. Tell her. Shentry says you're fired. He says she has a better offer from the Daily News. Ah, uh, you know I was only kidding. This is hot stuff, Chief. Stop everything. Composing room. Hold everything for page one makeover. All right, Eddie. All right, now, go. gentlemen, if you'll just uh, gather right around here. Mr. Foster, you sit Let down in this up. chair. Okay. <laughs> just get right in there. Uh, do you mind moving in a little bit, please? Oh, thank you. And, Mr. Foster, open that so we can see the plans. Thank you. That looks much better. All right, Eddie. That's a good shot. All right, hold it. Everybody straighten up. What's going on around here? That's what I want to know. What is going on around here? The plans. Where are they? Well, they're gone. Where's that photographer? Are you trying to send you away? He took them while we just brought them back to you. Yes, and you've got your story. Now what is it you want? But this is downright extortion. One more crack like that and I'll let you have it right between the eyes. I wouldn't use that if I were you. Why, you... Patsy! Oh. Patsy! What is that? Hey, help me with this. Are you still horsing around? What happened to you? I was doing all right until somebody hit me with that Davenport. What did you do with those drawings? Are you going to start that again? Well, they must be around here someplace. I had them just a second ago. You had them? Here I had them. I... <laughs> <laughs> for a minute, I thought I'd lost them. How'd you get them? Well, when the lights went out, I made a dive for them. Some guy just got his miss on them when I snatched them right out of his hand. Like that. Ha <laughs> ha, smart boy. Whose hand? Probably the guy that was trying to steal him. Probably one of your guys. Mr. Foster. Mr. Foster. What is it, Duckworth? Mr. Foster, there's a gentleman on the veranda. What does he want? I don't know, sir. Well, ask him. But he can't answer, sir. I'm afraid he's met with some misfortune. You know, out cold. Out cold? Yes, sir. Cold. Out there. What, another, another one? one? Right here, sir. It's Eddie Griffith. Here, let me. I took a course in first aid.
This man is deader than yesterday's headlines. Just so we don't destroy any evidence. We better get back inside and I'll telephone the police. Doctor? Yes, sir. Get this place straightened up. Yes, sir. Now, wait a minute. Just a minute, you guys. This is beginning to look like some kind of a gag. Are you guys trying to exterminate one another? Playful kind of a gag, I'd say. Last man left gets the drawings. Who's got them now? I have, and I'm gonna lock them up in my private safe. Better lock yourself up with it, pal, or one of your little playmates might decide to plug you. You seem to be pretty certain that one of the committee is the criminal. Why not? Now that I think of it, the gun went off right in my kisser. If I hadn't ducked, it would have blown my head off. Eddie, he wasn't shooting at Griffith. I was the bird he wanted. What makes you think that? Huh. Well, that's easy. He knew we had a couple of quick ganders at him, once in the laboratory and once in the car when he held us up. He knew we'd recognize him. And, uh, did you? No. No, but it was one of your outfit. And he's right here in this room. One sure thing, the shot was fired in this room. Nobody leaves the police get here. The man to call is Lieutenant O'Day. Why O'Day? Danny's a smart hombre. He's head of the homicide squad. He's the guy to knock your case over. I'll phone him. But first, I better call in the murder yarn. City desk. Gentry speaking. Jumping jeepers. No, 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 don't wait to come in here. Dictate it to Red. Sure, it'll be under your byline. Red, grab this on your phone. Full page one for new lead. Phantom killer strikes in dark. We got a make on this guy, O'Connor? Uh, I'm waiting for a report. Homicide squad, O'Day speaking. Oh, hi, Patsy. Oh. I, I'll be right over. Come on, Parker. Hiya, Danny. What's up? There's been a killer out at your uncle's house. You better come along. This man Griffith who was killed, did you know him? Why, yes. He was a member of the Foundation Committee. Oh. Did Uncle John phone you? No. Patsy. The way she digs up stuff, she must have a strain of bloodhound in her. She ought to be a cop instead of a reporter. Anytime she wants to be a cop, I've got a job for her. Foster? Yes. I'm O'Day, homicide squad. Oh, come right in. Hello, Uncle John. Hello, Jimmy. Well, what's going on? Somebody turned out the lights, and before we can get him on again, he shot Griffith. You know who did it? Well, it was all very sudden and mysterious. Oh. Oh, hello, Patsy. Hiya, Danny. Hi, Eddie. Hi. Were you here when it happened? Was I here? I skidded halfway across the room on my face. Well, looks like a benefit performance for the Daily Express. Yeah, it looks like I was the piazza de resistance. Huh? Corpse to you. Oh. My story's in already. There's the phone. Thanks. I'm familiar with the place. Well... Come on, where's the body? I'll show you. Come on, this way. Over here, Danny. Well, look. Look at what? The corpse. It's gone. It's, it's gone. gone. Patsy, dead men don't walk off. You both saw him, didn't you? Yes, I saw him. Certainly. He was right there. Parker, take a look around the ground. Yes, sir. Now, what made you think Griffith was dead? I ought to know when a man's dead. Besides, he was... Well, he was cold to the touch. <laughs> Look, sister, just because a man feels cold to the touch isn't proof that he's dead. Listen, Danny, when I touch a man and he stays cold, then I know he's dead. Besides, if he was dead, how could he disappear like this? Finding out things like that is your business. All she has to do is write about it. Write about it. There's no corpse out there, and I don't think there ever was one. So it was a hoax, huh? It certainly was not. Yeah, the next thing you're going to say was there wasn't any shooting. There very definitely was. I was here when the shot was fired. We were all here. Why, certainly. Of course we were. Oh, if any one of you guys could have done the killing. And when the light came on again, you had a drawing. He wouldn't have any reason to commit murder. But you would. And you, and you, and you. Why, he isn't clever enough to plan a crime like that. He hasn't got all his marbles. 
Have you any? Of course not. What do you mean I haven't got all my marbles? I found this gun outside beneath the window. Whose gun is this? What do you expect a man to do? Stick his head through a noose? What do you want him to walk to you and say, here I am? I didn't ask for your advice. If you're going to start asking questions like that, you need all the advice you can get. You shut up, too. Okay, chum. Mr. Forrester, have you any idea why any man would want to commit murder in your home? Well, it's possible someone was trying to get possession of the drawings to an invention owned by the Emerson Foundation. Possible? It's more than that. He tried to kill the inventor tonight at the laboratory, then stole the drawings. Is that true? Well, yes. Nah, it's a cinch it was somebody right in this room. Why don't you jug the whole outfit? You have to have evidence before you can arrest a person for murder. Besides, I don't think there ever was a murder. Yeah, well, how about Griffith? When he's found, he'll be questioned. Good night, Mr. Foster. Good night, everybody. Good night. Danny! Just a minute, Danny! Danny, oh, Danny, you're not really gonna let a man get away with murder, are you? You heard what I said about evidence. If you have enough to prefer charges yourself, I'll take anybody here down to headquarters for further questioning. Oh, you're laying it right in my lap, son. I'm not in by damage suits for false arrest. Good night. Imagine a guy like that walking on. He's got the killer right in his mitts. Don't worry, I'll dream something up. Come on. Let a corpse walk off. All I know is the express is on the street with a murder story under my byline. And there is no corpus delicti. Ain't that delicti. I want to talk to him. Sorry, he can't walk and he can't talk. Why can't he? Did you ever see a corpse who could? I read about one in the Express. <laughs> Funny. Well, where is he? In the back seat of my car. How'd he get there? Somebody must have put him there, Danny. Oh, please, don't give me that kind of stuff. Well, don't tell me you have an exclusive on another murder. No, no, same one. Where's the corpse this time? In the back of our car. And if you don't remove it, Mr. O'Day, we're going to deliver it to the editor of our paper. Well, let's go take a look at it. It's free. You know, this time it better be there. Have a look, Lieutenant. Well, you still think you're being ribbed? Just as I thought. You mean he isn't there? He's gone. Now listen, you two. He was there a minute ago when we went inside. It certainly was. Looks like they've been ribbing you all along, Danny. There's a law against hoaxing the police. I ought to throw both of you in the clink. Get out before I do. Here, Here we, we go, go again. again. Fine pair you turned out to be. Dead man walks out on you at Foster's home. You give him a ride into town, and then he gives you the go-by again. Oh, we got you an exclusive on the invention, didn't we? Yeah, you got me an exclusive on this, too. Phantom killer strikes in dark. Okay, okay, we know it. We saw it on every newsstand from the police station to here. Now, you two better tell me the truth. What do you think I've been dreaming of, fairy tales? A very fantastic alibi. Only I don't happen to believe in pixies. If I hadn't seen Griffith with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it myself. Mr. Gentry, could it be that we're all wacky? No, not all of us. 
Just you two. I feel quite sane myself until I remember that we're out on the street with that cock and bull murder story that you phoned in. For that, I could boil you in oil. Okay, Gentry, but heat up a couple of cans for you and that chump all day. You'll need it when you discover there really has been a murder. I'm going to let you prove that. Our own time. Uh, Try it again. Call it anything you like, but you're off pay. All right, brother. It's okay with me. But when I come back, it'll be a twice the pay, and it still wouldn't pay my income tax. What are we going to do now? I still got that pass from Foster. Come on. Hey, General. Oh, you two back again. Yeah, only this time we got what it takes. Open sesame. What did you call me? Never mind. Does this do the trick or doesn't it? Yeah. From 115 in the rear. Don't wait up for us. Why, for two cents Never I Never can... mind. I'll do it myself. Thank you. <laughs> Who is it? Happy Clark. Hello. How do you do? Uh, I'm a reporter from the Daily Express. This is Eddie Jones, my uh, photographer. Oh, hi. Mr. Foster gave this to me. Yes, I know. He phoned me. Want to come in? Thank you. Um, I hate to bother you at this hour, but I have a deadline to make with my story. What do you mean, deadline? My head ain't got a job. Oh! <laughs> uh, his corns. Uh, now, uh, Professor, if you would uh, just give us a demonstration of this marvelous invention of yours and a sort of uh, outline of its general principles. No, but, uh... But your friend just said that you were not writing for any paper. Oh, well, he means we, uh, we don't exactly have a job. That is, we won't have one if you don't give us a story. <laughs> I see. At the present time, uh, the city editor considers us expendable, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Well, frankly, I don't. But if Mr. Foster wants me to demonstrate this machine to you, well, I suppose I'll tell me. Uh, do you folks know anything at all about electronics? Like, Oh, I, uh, y yes. It has something to do with electricity, hasn't it? Well, yes, it uh, has to do with electrical units, uh, impulses, uh, short waves and the control for scientific purposes. Oh, mm. uh, Tell me, Professor, uh, exactly what is this scientific marvel supposed to do? Oh, uh, that uh, picks up voices from a distance and reproduces them uh, through its speaker. A radio will do that. Quiet, Lambert. Well, yes. A radio records voices that are broadcast. But this machine does not need the use of a broadcasting device at the voice source. Uh, uh, do you see what I mean? No. No. <laughs> Uh, being newspaper people, you probably recall uh, an interesting case a few months ago uh, where a new listening device was said to have picked up an amazing conversation on Capitol Hill. Do you recall that? Uh, I remember reading about it someplace, uh, but I believe there was some question about whether it really happened. That's very true. There was a question. But with this machine, there's no question that such things could happen. Gee, that's wonderful. <laughs> you mean you could hear anybody, anywhere? Well, if you couldn't tune in on them, yes. Well, that's positively dangerous. What chance would a girl have to keep her secrets? Same as she always had. None. Uh, tell me, Professor, uh, could we tune in on something now? I'd love to listen to something. You want me to? <laughs> well, let's try and see what we can get. Here we go. You should have heard what Sally told me about Betty. Oh, boy, was I surprised. Would I like to get something on that cat? What was it? I promise not to tell a soul. You know very well I won't repeat it. Well, of course not. But maybe I shouldn't mention it at all. It really mustn't go any farther. It's absolutely sub Rosa. Nobody must know what happened. It's positively a secret. Yes, yes, my dear. Well, you know the Carltons, mm -hmm. and is he good-looking? And you know his wife works night. Mm -hmm. Oh, what did you want to turn it off for? Oh, didn't you hear the lady say it was a secret? Oh, let's play fair. Now, let's tune in the city room of the Express. I'd like to hear old man Gentry blowing his top. Ah, now that's the hurdle we still have to jump. We can't tune in just anywhere yet. 
But there is a wavelength for every locality in the world. Mm. Now, uh, I can tune in on places that I've experimented with, mostly the homes and offices of the Foundation's committeemen. Well, uh, while we're about it, how about showing us how the recording machine works, eh? Huh? All right. I'll try and get to John Foster. No doubt about it. Griffith must have known something about this fellow's plan. That's why he was killed. Everything's very mysterious on the surface. When you analyze it, it's plain as day. One of our own people stole those plans. There are half a dozen outside interests who'd give a million dollars to get their hands on it. What'd you do that for? Turn it on again, quick. I'm sorry, Miss Clark, but that conversation was purely confidential. Mr. Foster would not like any stranger to... Strangers? How do you get that way? We're all messed up in this thing together. I didn't tell you, but I was hauling that body all over town tonight in my car. No! Yes. What'd you, what'd you do with it? I didn't do anything with it. Well, it just disappeared. How, how, how'd you get it in the first place? I didn't have it in the first place. Somebody else put it in the back of my car. I know who it was. Who? The guy that killed him, of course. Don't mind him. Listen, Professor, I'm in this thing up to my neck and I'm getting deeper all the time. That's why I came to you. I, I thought maybe you could help me with this... this contraption of yours. Oh. Uh -huh. By telling me all you know about the murder. But I don't know anything. Foster told me about Griffith's disappearance, but he couldn't explain it. Who was Foster talking to you just now? I have no idea. There's no time to quibble. Turn that machine back on. All right. I guess he's through talking. I'm going to find out. And you keep that thingamajig on while I'm gone. You might pick up a clue. Come on, Eddie! Everybody went to bed and put the door on last. How about some lights? Yeah. Big pardon, I thought I heard intruders. I guess maybe you did, chum. Uh. <gasps> well, he isn't dead at all. You better get him up to bed. Yeah, give me a hand. Come on, Ducky. Get his feet. Bit meaty, isn't it? Yeah. Let me think. I don't know. You can't remember anything? Uh, the drawings. Uh, someone must have stolen them. Who? Who? 
I just can't seem to remember. Somebody's downstairs. Maybe it's him. Ah, you're imagining things. There he goes! What goes here? He stole the drawings. What drawings? You know what drawings. Hand him over. Oh, so that's what he stole the drawings. I was chasing him, too. Saw him come out of the house as I was coming up the walk. You mean you were chasing somebody? Yes, Uncle John phoned me to come over and have a talk with him. Oh, so it's you who was phoning. Well, were you here? No, but we heard it on a machine over the laboratory. That's why we came here. Well, has anything happened, Uncle John? <laughs> Nothing, only he gets slugged by the thief. Then he knows who it is. Now, that's the trouble. He can't remember a thing. Well, in that case, come on. We better phone O'Day. Come on. Now, uh, let's get this thing straight. Where were you two when this happened? We were probably ringing the front doorbell while Foster was being slugged. Did you see anyone? Mm, yes and no. You did or you didn't? Oh, not just a minute. We only got a quick gander. It was darker than midnight in a coal mine. You never quite see anything, do you? And yet you're always around when anybody gets beamed. That's funny. Hmm. Entirely coincidental, my dear fellow. Entirely coincidental. And it's not funny. You know, I don't know why I was called in this time. This isn't a homicide. Listen, my friend. It's a development of the Griffith case, and that was a murder. Yeah? Well, I think I'll go and have a talk with Foster. But I'll see you two later. Yeah, we'll see you later. After I've solved the crime and trust the solution right in your lap. By the way, any trace of Griffith? Griffith? Oh, I thought you were still hauling him around in the back of your car. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty grim humor, Danny. Yeah, there's nothing quite as funny as a nice, juicy murder. I don't like you. He doesn't like you. Sir, don't like me. Yeah, now, look, I'm a little tired tonight, Patsy. How about calling the whole thing off for the night? Let's get a little shut-eye, huh? You just keep your big mouth shut. We're gonna make a dash for the laboratory. I've got a hunch Reynolds got a clue. Oh, wait. O'Day wants to talk to us some more. Shh. So do you suppose that they... Shh. Shh. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. I'm so sorry. I came over as quickly as I could. Is Mr. Foster badly injured? Not too badly. Say, so how do you know he was hurt? Professor Reynolds was tuned in here when it happened. He got in touch with me at my home. Uh, now, if I could see Mr. Foster for a moment. Uh, right upstairs in the bedroom with Jimmy on a day. Thank you. I bet there's a guy. Yeah, it could be. Uh-uh. Visitor's day. More trouble, eh? Yeah, plenty. What's happened now? Somebody conked Foster on the head. Stole the drawings. You don't say. Where is Foster? Upstairs in the bedroom. Why didn't you ask him how he knew? Ah, what's the use? He'd have an alibi. Hello? Yeah, this is the John Foster residence. Now, this is Patsy Clark, a reporter. Reporter until I got mixed up in this deal. Oh, sure, I remember you, Mr. Wheeler. I met you out here tonight. No, no, he was just stunned. Sure, you can come over if you want to. It seems to be doing it. Okay, bye. How do you know? Reynolds. Come on, let's get out of here. Mm -hmm. 
I say. Tell me, sweetheart, what do you do around here besides snoop? Prepare the bath, serve the coffee, do the silver. Yeah, you've probably got your pockets full right now. Come on, let's grant. You can't do that, sir. Oh, we can't. Don't do that, sir, please. Are you kidding? I think he needs a little attention. I think you're right. Well, what do you expect, the Purple Heart? Uh, what's the matter, Duckworth? They were taking French leave, sir. And taking what? You'd better reconsider. Reconsider what? Your intention, sir. You may go, Duckworth. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. What do you got there? You and Private Gestapo? Yeah, what's the idea of posting a guard around us? If you want to get your story in, there's a telephone. As usual, Mr. Foster, you're a little behind in your current events. Eddie and I are no longer members of the press. You mean you quit the Express? Well, that's sort of vice versa. The Express don't like us either. Never did think you were clever, but I still didn't think you were an intellectual washout. What do you mean? You're gonna stand around with your finger in your mouth while heads are being bashed in and bodies being snatched. You have to have your own throat cut before you'll admit there's a killer on the loose. I'll admit things are getting screwy about a minute, but I don't see just what I can do about it. You can do team up with me and we'll get our hooks in the killer before he's a day older. That is providing the killer don't get his hooks in us first. Yes, that's just what I was thinking. Just thinking of me, I got a couple of good ideas. What do you propose doing? Listen, Reynolds was listening in from the lab. Well, then he should know who the criminal is. Your IQ is going up by the minute. Why don't we call Reynolds? No, with all this going on, somebody might be listening in on the phone. But it's illegal to tap wires. Yeah, and it's illegal to kill people. We'll be back in less than an hour, Jimmy. Come on, character. Okay, Duckworth, let him go. Thank you. Hey, you know, that may be concussion. His memory's pretty faulty. I think you better give the doctor another ring. I'll call him right now. The line is dead. You think that wire's cut? I don't know. I'll check it. Well, I'll get the doctor myself. Say, I've got to get back to headquarters. Well, thanks a million for coming over, Danny. Oh, any time I can help you, Jimmy, you know. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Goodbye. There's no use arguing, you ain't got a pass. I told you, we left it with Professor Reynolds a couple of hours ago. That was to see him once, not to move in permanently. Now scram, will you? Come on, Patsy. I ain't got a name for you. That's Reynolds' window, all right. <whistles> Professor Reynolds? You who? Professor Reynolds. Yes! You want to wake up the whole neighborhood? Hey, look. I'll see if anybody's home. Here, give me a boost. What do you want to do? Give me a boost. You go around the hall door. I'll let you in from the inside. Okay. Hey, the machine. And not long ago. Whoever killed him must have smashed the machine. We better call the police. Maybe you want to be charged with murder, but I don't. Oh, come on. Just a minute. We're taking the machine with us. Listen, are you going completely wacky? Maybe I am, Eddie. Maybe I am. Oh, no, what do you don't do with that silly thing? Just a hunch. I just have a hunch. Come on, let's go. Wait a minute until I swallow my gizzard. Are you looking for someone? You're doggone right I am, and someone may be looking for me. Is the copper O'Day still in there? He left right after you did. That's great. Pardon me. Well, 
May I congratulate you? Thanks, old boy. Come on, baby, take it from there. Here, put it here, Eddie. Wait a minute. Where's Jimmy Foster? He's upstairs, miss. Do something. Hide this, hide this. I got an idea. Look, they'll never see it now. Here, help me. Come on, come on, come on. What are you trying to hide, Patsy? Oh, I'm nothing, nothing. Oh, what makes you think we're trying to hide anything? What? It's Professor Reynolds' invention. All right, get moving, Ducky. Okay? Take a good look at what's left of it. Patsy, how did you get that thing? And what's happened to it? It's smashed. We were all wrong about Griffith. He's not dead. Thank you. I tell you were right about Griffith. That's what I was telling them. He's alive. You're wrong. He's dead. Well, what makes you think he's dead? The coroner said so. Where'd you find him? He's been riding around with me. Somebody chucked him in the back of my car. Well, where's he now, Danny? I just took him to the morgue. Hello. Yes, Mike. This is Jimmy Foster. Reynolds. Uh-oh. I guess this cook's our goose. Well... Well, Lieutenant O'Day is here. You'd better tell him. Oh, Danny. Yeah? O'Day speaking. What? Professor Reynolds dead. Reynolds? Why, I just talked to him on the phone. Oh, oh. Professor Reynolds has been murdered and the invention stolen. Why, the machine is here. Well, how'd it get here? Uh, we brought it here from the Emerson Laboratory. Was Reynolds there at the time? Yeah, of course. You mean to tell me that Reynolds let you have it? He couldn't help himself. He was dead. Oh, so he was dead when you got there. Well, why didn't you call the police? We told you about the Griffith case and you wouldn't believe it. We didn't want you messing this one up, too. Why did you bring the machine here? At the time, I was stupid enough to take your word Griffith was still alive. I was going to have this thingamajig repaired and snag him with it. Jimmy was going to help me. Were you? Well, yes. You said yourself she was smart enough to be on the homicide squad. Danny, I've seen you crack a lot of tough cases, but this is the first time I've seen you stub your toes. You're close enough to kill her right now to spit on him, you know that, don't you? You know, I'd give anything if you could prove that. Maybe we still can. That is, if uh, Jimmy will still help us. Why, of course I will. Anything. Uh, may we use your phonograph? My phonograph? Mm -hmm. Well, sure. It's right over there. Thank you, Jimmy. Get rid of these things, please. Okay. Let's stop all this foolishness, Mr. O'Day. I'm going to call the police commissioner. You'll call nobody. Go ahead, Patsy. Danny, see that nobody runs out on this recital. Blake, if I had that invention of Reynolds, I could get two million dollars for it any day. Two millions is a lot of money for anybody. But Foster insists the thing is not for sale. I'll talk to you later about this, Josh. Why, this is ridiculous. I won't stay here and listen to any more of it. I'm getting out of here right now. Listen, I tell you, nobody's leaving. Hey. What is this, a double cross? It looks that way. Looks like we're sunk. I guess we don't have pay dirt this trip. Do you know you're not allowed in here? That's the reason I came through the window. It's Jimmy! Jimmy. I made Foster a proposition. I heard it over the machine tonight. So you were listening in? Yes. And I also know that you're the man who tried to kill Foster and stole the blueprints. You tried to kill Griffith, too. Don't. Don't, Jimmy. Don't! Jimmy, I'm afraid I'll have to put you under arrest. Oh, brother, he must have burned up the road getting to the laboratory ahead of us. Well, I guess you know now who switched Griffith's body into your car. I do. Oh, am I stupid. This newspaper here should have told me it was Jimmy who knocked his uncle over the head. Has that got the story? Yeah, but not in print. It was a late addition that only Jimmy could have brought from the office. 
That job down at Homicide is still open, Patsy. <laughs> Thank you, Danny, darling, but my job is headlines and bylines. Nab's killer after a night of terror. Oh, brother. I got it. I got it. What do you got? Say, why didn't you two get a picture of Jimmy Foster? Oh, get a load of that. Well, that's Jimmy. <gasps> You mean to tell me you had this in the camera all the time? Certainly. I took it when he was holding us up for the drawings. Hey, here's a new one. Get over to Danny O'Day's quick. Well, well here, here we, we go, go again. again.